This video will discuss Dionysus or Bacchus in America. It will discuss Egypt and the children of Israel and some of the other people in America. It will give the hidden me meaning of the land of Goshen where the children of Israel lived. It will talk about the exodus from America and more. Mercury and Dionysus or Bacchus. In video 30, Elohim and Greek gods, we saw that Zeus impregnated Semele and she died before giving birth when Zeus revealed himself in his glory. Zeus hid the baby from his jealous wife and maybe mother, Hera, by sewing him into his thigh. He gave the baby to Mercury to hide from Hera. Mercury brought the infant to the nymph, nymphs of Mount Nisus, hence the name Dionysus, or the god of Nisus. Dionysus, god of wine and madness. Dionysus, or Bacchus, became the god of wine, fertility, religious ecstasy, ecstasy and ritual madness. Which, and much like, uh, like Mercury, the god of thieves and commerce, uh, Dionysus or Bacchus represents much of the modern world where, you know, people drink a lot and use drugs. And for instance, in this COVID-19, uh, most of the governors left the liquor stores and the pot stores open as essential businesses. Religious ecstasy and ritual madness would end the life of Pentheus, the king of thieves and follower of the dragon god and reason, the pen or pen dragon. The serpent dragon of Eden gave Adam and Eve the knowledge of good and evil. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, 5. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. John 10, 34. Here we have the androgynous Dionysius. This womanly statue of Dionysus mirrors the legend of his upbringing as a girl by King Athamas and Eno. And Dionysus is carrying a staff topped by a pine cone called a thyrsus. And here we have the pine cone in the Cortile de, de la Pina, in the courtyard of the pine cone in the Vatican. Because the Vatican, you know, many of the rites of... Uh, Christianity have to do with wine. The Bacchae of Euripides. This video will quote from the Gilbert Murray translation available for free online. It also will quote, quote from the Loeb Classical Library version translated by David Kovacs. The Bacchae begins with the return of Dionysus in the guise of a man to Thebes. Dionysus praises his grandfather Cadmus for keeping the tomb of the lightning bride inviolate. The story of Dionysus coming to Thebes takes place during the age of Cadmus. Cadmus had married Harmonia, either the daughter of Ares and Aphrodite, or of Zeus and Electra, a Pleiad or Cherub. All the gods attending the wedding of Cad all the gods attended the wedding of Cadmus and Harmonia. They had four daughters: Eno, Otono, Agave, and, and Semele. Agave married Etchion, the viper man, and they had a child called a child Pentheus. Cadmus ceded his kingship to his grandson Pentheus. The Travels of Dionysus. To arrive at Thebes, Dionysus passed through the white, wide hot plains where Persian sunbeams play. Dionysus crossed the storm oppressed climb of the Mede. Dionysus crossed Araby the blessed and Asia all that by the salt sea lies. And here we have a map of the Louisiana Purchase which Napoleon uh, sold to Thomas Jefferson I think in 1802. In the wide hot plains where Persian sunbeams play. So any for the viewers who haven't ever been to this area of the, of the Americas in the summertime this is, area becomes super hot and it's all, consists of all the plains, virtually no trees anywhere through here except for where men planted them and watered them. And here, as I've discussed before, we have St. Louis, and right below St. Louis is Cahokia, or the or the Sun City, or Heliopolis in in Greek, and then right below it are Thebes and Cairo, 
and uh, we're and this story of Dionysus occurs here in 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 Thebes. And if you look at this map, I think that uh, well here we have Denver, which I think the tribe of Dan or the Tuatha the Don the Donon uh, came from that settled Ireland eventually, and I think the Exodus uh, uh, spread in all different directions, not just in one direction. And here I'll show later in the video this whole area here. I think Russian-speaking people occupied this area, uh, and I don't know what, who they would have been in his, history, but may, perhaps the Assyrians, uh, and then. I think the Greeks were black people, and I'll discuss that in a second, and they lived all through here. And I think one part of the Exodus went north here towards Detroit right here, and there's a strait here, and I think they went north of Lake Erie and then south of Lake Ontario, and here, right around here is Manchester, New York, where Joseph Smith found the golden tablets from the angel Moroni, and then I think they went further north here uh, into Montreal and then the St. Louis Seaway and made their way to England and Ireland, where they where they stationed for like about three years, just as in World War II, and then I think they invaded Europe in on the same beaches that uh, the Americans and British uh, supposedly invaded Normandy. Uh, and because I think the Normandy invasion was basically a, a religious reenactment. And I think they also went south, south here in UBTV, a very good channel on YouTube. Uh, I agree with a lot of things he says. He, he doesn't do the timeline the same. He says they came down here to, to uh, New Orleans and the Red Sea was here, but also the Great Lakes can become red too. And I think these people went uh, east here and went into southern Spain and into uh, uh, northern Africa. And that's part of the reason that, that so many people in northern Africa speak French. And these people, the Russian speaking people, I think, went in all different directions, including, and they became the hordes that invaded uh, uh, Russia. And as Fomenko points out, Russian history is basically completely lies. And uh, I think they also went to Japan and prob probably to India too. And Egypt means Greece. Scholars long thought the Greeks derived their knowledge and culture from Egypt. I think most of the Egyptian tales and history refer to the Greeks of North America. Egyptians today refer to their country as Misra, not as Egypt. And that's very similar to the Mitzrayim that, uh, in Hebrew. And the name Egypt derives from the Greek Egyptos, or the Nile River, or a metonym for the whole country. A metonym is just like when you use one phrase, like the White House, to refer to the president. The Black Land. Legends tell us ancient Egypt went by the name Kemet, meaning the Black Land. The Greeks used the term Melampodes, or Black Feet. And I think this refers to today's African Americans or Black Americans, and the UBTV YouTube channel has come to a similar conclusion. And here we have a red-haired mummy in the Turim Basin. I think this is one of the Russian-type people that fled uh, uh, America, western part of America, and went into Asia. Uh, and he's a, he's a giant at about six feet six inches or two meters. And scientists found dozens of such well-preserved mummies, including some with very finely woven robes or dresses and brightly colored clothing. And the scientists said they can't understand how they could have such finely woven clothing. And I think that's because they had a very advanced civilization, much like ours today. Scientists date these mummies to over 3,000 years ago, but they probably date back at most a thousand years or fewer to the exodus from North America. And I have to tell you, I keep on thinking this event occurred much closer to our time than even the uh, 12th and 13th century, as I've been talking about in these videos. And here we have uh, the Xianjian, uh China. Uh, which is basically in the middle of nowhere where they found these mummies in the Turim Ter Basin. And the storm storm near Solomon, Kansas, because Dionysus crossed the storm-oppressed climb of the Mede, 
And we'll see the Med Medians or Med Medians again in the stories of Akhenaten and Moses, and we'll see uh, Midian uh, in Kansas itself. Salt Lake, Utah, Dionysus crossed Araby the blessed, and Asia all that by the salt sea lies. I cry this Thebes to waken. Dionysus brings a religious awakening. Dionysus calls for the th Thebes to awaken, to clasp my wand, my ivy javelin. Dionysus berates his mother's sisters. When Semele became pregnant from Zeus, her sisters mocked her, saying she lied to cover up her shame. They said Zeus killed her with lightning for lying about bearing his child. Dionysus attacks his mother's sisters for this blasphemy. And Dionysus revenge. In revenge for their treatment of his mother, Dionysus sends his mother's sisters and the women of Thebes running wild into the roofless rocks and shadowy pine trees green. And pine trees are all over the Thebes area today. The blind seer Teresius. The blind seer Teresius plays a large role in the myths of Thebes. In the Bacchae, Teresius also follows Dionysus. And as we shall see in the Oedipus story, he told Oedipus that he had killed his father and married his mother, resulting in Oedipus or Betuel blinding himself and his mother and his mother wife to Costa or Milka hanging herself. And also in the Akhenaten story has a blind seer. Teresius and Cadmus. The elderly Cadmus comes out of his palace and joins Teresius. Cadmus and Teresius, alone among the men of Thebes, walk into the forest to dance for Dionysus. Cadmus, and in all Thebes shall no man dance but we and Teresius. I, Thebes, is blinded. Thou and I can see. Pentheus opposes Dionysus and his new religion. Pentheus mocks the story of Dionysus' birth from Zeus's thigh. Tis all his word, this tale of Dionysus. And so Pentheus sees his grandfather Cadmus and the blind seer Teresus dancing to Bacchus and asks them to stop. It is not your white head so flancy flown. It cannot be. Cast off that ivy crown because Pentheus lives in reason and he can't see this uh, wild... Uh, dancing, you know, fueled by drinking and maybe drugs. And Cadmus tries to correct Pentheus to save him. My son, right well, Teresius points thy road. O make thine habitation here with us, not lonely against men's uses. Hazardous is this thick, this quick bird-like beating of thy thought, where no thought dwells. And I think we all have to avoid this too, because today we have people trying to put us into fear uh, constantly with trauma-based mind control. And those who wake up often become angry. And anger also clouds our thoughts. We have to remain calm and clear-headed during these times. And so Pentheus orders Dionysus arrested, but later Dionysus escapes with ease. Pentheus vows to end the madness of the woman. I'll give him sacrifice, women's blood. That's what they deserve. And I shall shed lots of it in the glens of uh, Citheron. And of course, he's threatening to kill his own mother and aunts. Dionysus warns Pentheus, you'll all be put to flight. And it will be disgraceful if the Bacchant women rout your bronze back shields with thyrsoi. And so Dionysus warns Pentheus that the women will destroy him if he goes into the groves, but they will hunt you down even if you go in secret, and then he sets him up. Dionysus offers to take him there, and Pentheus accepts. First, Dionysus has Pentheus' hair grow long or puts a wig on him. Then he dresses him in a woman's gown with a thyrsus and, and a fawn sin to carry him. We see this theme a lot in our modern days of men dressing as women. It's basically a ritual, ritual of paths passage for all black actors. Pentheus first objects to the women's clothing, but caves in. And so here Pentheus is setting him up. Women, the man is walking into the trap. And so Pentheus hides in a pine tree to spy on the Bacchant women. Dionysus cries out, young women, I bring you the man who is mocking you and my rights punish him. Agave, Pentheus' mother, tells the women to rip the tree out of the ground by its roots. And in their wild frenzy, they do. And they kill him. 
Agave, Pentheus ripped off his disguise and begged Agave, It's me, mother, Pentheus, the son you bore in Echion's house. But her mouth dripping with foam and her eyes rolling in her head, Agave did not recognize him. Agave tore Pentheus's right arm off. His aunt Eno destroyed his left side, and his aunt Otono and the rest of the Bacchae women ripped him to shreds. And so Agave returns to Thebes carrying Pentheus' he head and tells people she captured this young mountain lion. Agave tells the people, where is my aged father? Let him come here. And where is my son Pentheus? He should bring a ladder to the house so that he can nail to the triglyphs the head of this lion I caught before coming here. And so Cadmus and his servants return with the body parts of Pentheus they could find. Eventually, Cadmus gets Agave to see that he has Pentheus, she has Pentheus's head in her hand. Agave asks how she came to have her son's head in her hands, and Cadmus explains the madness of Bacchus to her. Dionysus has destroyed us. Now I realize this, Agave says. And the two serpents. Dionysus tells Cadmus, You will change your form and become a snake, and your wife, Ares' daughter, Harmonia, whom you married, though a mere mortal, will also take on the form of a serpent. And here we have Cadmus and Harmonia on the caduceus of Mercury. And so Cadmus goes on, he tells Cadmus he will become a serpent, and Dionysus tells Cadmus, then at the head of a barbarian army, you will drive an ox cart and will sack many cities with your innumerable host. That is what Zeus's prophecy says. And when they have plundered Apollo's oracle, they will have a miserable homecoming. But Ares will rescue you and Harmonia and settle you to live in the land of the blessed. Cadmus, the serpent, and Moses. In Numbers 21.8, Yahweh ordered Moses to make a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. Later, Moses would lead his barbarian horde against the Amalek in Rephidim. And we saw the Amalek in Italy in an earlier video. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Exodus 17.11 Victory our Lord, John Everett Millet, 1871, showing Moses at the battle of Rephidim against the Amalek. Hold held up by her and Aaron. And here we have a map of the uh, French holdings in, uh, in the United States after Jamestown, and the blue represents uh, the French holdings. And I, and I have it written there with an arrow, Goshen. And it, of course, much of the Louisiana purchase, purchase we don't have in blue, so I think the blue should go further than it does. Uh, and you can see it includes the whole Mississippi Valley and, and beyond, and the Great Lakes and all, much, of Can, much of Canada, or at least much of Eastern Canada. The land of Goshen. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and they, thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. Genesis 45.10, Joseph speaking to his brothers. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies, and that's added by King James, shall be there to the end. Thou must na then thou mayest know that I, the Lord, in the midst of the earth. Exodus 8.22 The land of Goshen and the SH sign, because we, chapter 12 of Judges tells the Shibboleth story. The Gileads defeated the Ephraimites in a battle. To, to prevent fleeing Ephraimites from crossing the Jordan, the Gil Gileads demanded people say Shibboleth. And then they said unto him, Say now Shibboleth. And he said Sibboleth, Sibboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. Of course, Ephraim is the son of Joseph, so we have a split amongst the 12 tribes of Israel, and they're massacring each other. And if you read the Bible, and the English Bible says the land of Goshen, but the Bible in French and in Spanish and in Italian says Gosen, G-O-S-E-N, no H.
Goshen, or Gosen, plural. Hebrew, fo Hebrew forms the plural with the I-M ending. The E-N ending in Goshen, or Gosen, forms the plural, just as in the R-E-N ending in children forms the plural of child. Gos in French and Canadian French. In French, gos means kid, as in the English colloquial for child, or also in English lamb, because in English we equate sheep and and men, and interestingly in Hebrew, uh, the word son or ton, people write it, means uh, means sheep and lamb too, but they have another word for lamb also, zay. Uh, but of course it doesn't mean lamb in French, it just means kid, as in child in French. In Canadian French, gosse plural means nuts or balls, as in testicles. And that's the NTC's Dictionary of Canadian French, page 14. Land of Goshen then means the land of children. The children of Israel in the land of Goshen or Gossen are the castrated men. Oshkosh begosh children's clothing. In 1875, Oshkosh, Wisconsin had a great fire, like basically every city. Founded in 1895 as a manufacturer of adult clothes, in the early 20th century, Oshkosh Bagosh started making children's clothes, expensive children's clothes today. Osh in Aramaic means foundation. Strong's Hebrew 70, 787 and Theological Wordbook of the Old Testament 2613. Koshara in Hebrew means prosperity and also can mean singing. Strong's Hebrew 3574 and the Theological Wordbook of the Old Testament 1052a. Kosh also relates to kosher, right and proper, and the Theological Wordbook of the Old Testament 1052. So, Bagash means of the child, because the B prefix in Hebrew means like in, uh, like Berashit in the first word in the Bible, in the beginning, uh, of the child or in the child. Singing children? Children as the foundation of right and prosper prosperity, proper pros uh, prosperity, or maybe singing children. And here we have an orphan train. And I want to thank all the YouTubers who have done videos on orphan trains. I don't know who started. I think maybe the first one I, I saw, I think, was Conspiracies R Us, with all these little children standing there. And, uh, you know, some people have made some videos showing incubator children, and they have... Uh, uh, babies uh, uh, in incubators at, at fairs, at the World Ex Expositions, and people watching them. And in one of them, I think the Alaska World Fair, they raffled off a, one of these ch children. And so if you see the number on here, I think it's number 381, which uh, adds up to 12, or for time, or for the 12 tribes of Israel, or for the 12 signs of the Zodiac. So who knows what we have going on here? Not me. And here we have Daenerys Targaryen of the Game of Thrones, or Moses, and the Unsullied, the castrated warriors, the children of Israel. And that's, I think, you know, I've referred, I think, a couple times now to uh, this show representing whatever has happened and, and comparing Daenerys to Moses. Because maybe when the princess found Moses, she could see that, you know, could identify him as a Hebrew child right away because he, was, he lacked certain parts of his body. And here we have the freed slaves host, hosting Daenerys Targaryen and chanting Misha, 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 or Mother, 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 or Moses, Moses, Moses. Grandma Moses, a famous American artist. And Daenerys Targaryen and her dragon destroying King's Landing. Who knows if dragons really existed or we have some sorts of machines or some types of items like this. But this episode really preserved, presented a very disturbing side of this Daenerys Moses figure. Uh, just, you know, ma massacring people in, in revenge. And here we have the United States with all the, basically the United States... Uh, West of the Mississippi consists of a giant desert. Uh, and if you fly over, over from, you know, from the East Coast to any of the big cities, Denver, Salt Lake, Phoenix, San Diego, uh, it'll be, you'll see only brown uh, ground underneath you. And I think this had something to do with the, the plagues of Egypt, the 10 plagues of Egypt, and people fleeing from this area. 
And here we have the whole of North Africa, uh, a desert, and, you know, old maps show cities in here. And you, quite a few people have made uh, YouTube videos about this. And, of course, the Near East, all a desert. And here we have uh, a desert going all the way deep into Central Asia, you know, and much, much of Western China. And here we have Australia, also a huge desert. And now for something completely different. When I open up uh, Google Earth uh, and zoom in a little bit, I get this part of the Rocky Mountains. And I don't know if the, the rest of you can see this, but I always see a rabbit here waving at me. An eye right there, another eye here, an ear in Utah. This is right on the border of Utah and Colorado. Most of it's in Utah. An ear here, an ear flopping down into Colorado, a nose, and a little paw waving up at me. And here's a larger version of it. You can see the eye, the, want the right eye. And here you can see the eye and part of the whites of the eye, the sclera in this part. And the nose, of course, and the flopping ear and the other ear and the little paw waving. You know, it makes me think the people who make these Google Maps have some sort of humor going on with us. And here we have the Russian bear. And as I said earlier, that western part of the United States, I think Russian people occupied it. And here we have the Russian uh, hammer and sickle and the, and the Russian red star. And of course, the sickle we've seen with uh, uh, Kronos uh, castrating his father Uranus. And we've, you know, the sickle we saw in Tony Fauci. And the star represents uh, the angels, I believe. And of course, the sickle can also represent the crescent moon, as in the in the Islam. And here we have the Texas Lone Star flag. And here we have one state to the west, New Mexico, the state animal, a bear. And one more state to the west, we have uh, the Arizona Red Star with a rising sun, and that the the rising sun symbol looks very much like the Japanese rising sun, and Moses, Moses' father Yitro, or Jethro, or Yitro in, in Hebrew, in Russian, which when they spell the word, word uh, Yitro in Russian, it looks very much like uh, the Hebrew Yitro. And, it, it, and Dobre Yutro, good morning, uh, means morning. Yitro, or Yutro, means morning in Russian. And I think that uh, uh, Jethro was a priest of the rising sun. Because if you study Egyptian history, they had two factions, the, peop the people of the rising sun and the people of the setting sun. In California flag with the Russian bear and the Russian red star. And historians admit that, you know, Rus the, the Russians had a lot to do with the settlement of California. And here we have the Nevada lone star. And here we have the University of Montana grizzlies like the Russian bear. And here we have uh, the University of Montana uh, uh, right down here, uh, right in the eye of Minos, who we saw uh, in uh, near, and we saw all the things related, the carols and the Helena in Montana and the Drummonds. And so we have Montana, uh, the grizzly, in the eye of Minos. Thank you for watching. The next video finally will arrive at the stories of Oedipus and Akhenaten. Then I will make my first video on Jesus. Then I will make a video on cognates in Hebrew with many other languages. After that, I don't know for sure, but perhaps a video identifying Moses and Joshua as famous Romans, because I think the Romans empire, as we call it, really uh, consists of Hebrew history.